Hello, my name is Angus Connolly and I'm the product manager for our Flexcom software. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model the wave resource environment in Flexcom. So I'm just going to pick up from where I left off in the, um, the last tutorial. So let's just open that um, model again. If you recall, we had a floating dual body point absorber and, and the geometry and the structural properties have been defined on screen. So the next logical step then is to, to define the, the wave resource environment. Um, now the easiest way to do this is actually to to leave Flexcom Wave. So we, we import data for externally because Flexcom is Flexcom Wave is coupled to Exceedance. Uh, we can import data directly from the cloud. So if I just enter my um, logon details, it should allow me to log on to Exceedance uh, cloud services. So this is just a very temporary account that I have um, with Exceedance at the moment, and there's just one Wave resource location here at uh, Hollyhead. Um, but with the, with the full logon credentials, there will be many, many locations. They're obviously a, quite a large geographical spread. But let's just uh, take the one for Hollyhead. Um, you can pick from devices as well. The, the, the device and the C-state kind of go together in the Exceedance product. We'll cover that in, in, a, in a, another tutorial. For now, I'm just interested in the, the wave scatter diagram for the Hollyhead location. So if I just go ahead and click Import there. Uh, you'll see that I now have a new environment component called Hollyhead Deep. I'll just open that. Um, I close the model view now just to give it more space on the screen. If I scroll down here, um, you can see the scatter diagram has been imported. Uh, it's wave height, HS in meters against uh, wave period, uh, TP or peak period in seconds. Um, and it's got a relatively small uh, spread of sea states across, um, so it seems to be quite a narrow banded really for that particular geographical location. Um, you can see that the scatter diagram is color coded, so you can see the sea states which are more prevalent, which have got the highest number of occurrences in a particular time frame. Uh, they appear in a in more orange color, and obviously the fewer ones are just um, they, they sort of fade out into the background, into white background. Um, that's the scatter diagram. Um, so when you model this in Flexcam Wave, uh, the water depth is automatically came across. In this case, it's seven meters, quite shallow. You'd also need to populate some basic parameters in Flexcam Wave, which aren't in uh, the Exceedance Cloud uh, database. So the Cloud database has all the wave scatter diagram information there, the sea states, but it doesn't have very basic parameters like water density, um, acceleration due to gravity, and so on. Um, also, excuse me, 9.81 obviously. Seabed properties in Flexcom, um, we can model, uh, at, the, at the moment we can model uh, just flat seabed, but we can do arbitrary seabed, um, arbitrary seabed profiles as well in Flexcom itself. In Flexcom we have, just in this very first version, it's, it's a flat seabed with different friction coefficients. But let's not overly concern ourselves with the seabed definition as I'm primarily interested here in just the environmental conditions. So. It's important to state what uh, the spectrum type is, whether it's Pearson, Moskowitz, or John Swap. Um, and then when we go to run the simulations in Flexcom, we need to know a certain number of harmonics. This is the number of um, individual regular wave components which are used to simulate a random spectrum in the time domain. Um, I co could cover the theory in, in another presentation. But for now, uh, the main thing is to, that the scatter diagram has been imported correctly. So I could maybe do another environmental component if I didn't want to use the Exceedance Cloud, if there was some environment that wasn't contained there, then I could actually define one manually. So I could start you know, typing in some, some, some values manually. Um, obviously this is just quite random now, it wouldn't make a lot of sense really. But you can input your own data, your custom individual data as well. The easiest way to do that would be if you had access to something in a spreadsheet. Uh, for example, here I've got uh, another type of wave scatter diagram, so I could just copy the information from Excel and paste it right back in here. The only thing to be careful of here is that just the position that you paste it in. So the extents here, the first cell here, really with um, some numerical data is 5.5. Um, he is 5.5 and uh, first corner of this grid is 0.75 so that's not where I've pasted it there so let me just select all and then just delete all those cells and I'll just repaste this in where I should have pasted it the first time so that would be about here. Another thing just to be careful of is this in this case I have HS and TE so I need to explicitly specify that this is indeed 
TE and not TZ or TP. Um, and that's 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 pretty much all that's to it. Um, if we were to go on and actually do a simulation, I'm confirmed with just the wave environment in this tutorial, but I think it's worth actually mentioning a simulation right now as well, just because there is some um, information which relates to it here as well. So if I just go into a, create a brand new simulation, uh, I can have a choice of device types. I've got the floating body dual point absorber, which I defined earlier, and another device which was imported from the exceedance database called the if. As I scroll down here, uh, I can see that the C state is, is Holly hit, so that mimics what I've seen on the environmental component. If I were to change this simulation to use this new environment not, rather than Holly hit, I uh, would see that the diagram populates uh, automatically. So when I simulate this in the FlexCam Wave in the time domain, it, it effectively runs a time domain simulation for every combination of HS and and TE, and there's probably about you know 40 or 50 cells there with non-zero percentage occurrences in it. Each of those um, simulations, you know, might last for for one hour, maybe like 3,600 seconds uh, at a, at a quite a small time step. So that can be quite time consuming. So in Flexcom Wave, we also have an additional option, which is to actually group similar C states together and call them a block. So for example, I might group all these C states here into what's called a block. And I could just repeat that process for a few a few others. So I just right put, use the mouse to select the C set and right click and create a block. And then within each of those blocks, I could nominate one particular C state as a reference C state for that block. So so what does that mean? That means that when I go to run the time domain simulations in Flexcam Wave, rather than running a, a time domain simulation for every single individual combination of HS and TZ, it actually runs a subset of those and just runs the reference C states within each within each block. For the remaining C states uh, within within each block, uh, it uses a linear extrapolation technique to estimate what the other variables are. So for example, if I got a power, particular power output from this C state here, it would estimate what the power output is for the, the other C states in the block based on um, an extrapolation technique. If you want further details on the extrapolation technique, let's just pop up the help menu. Um, let me just scroll down. So. There's a section here on the scatter diagram and we talk about the C state blocks and reference C states and that's just what I briefly explained there. Um, and you can see on, on the right hand side of the screen that's a full, fully uh, completed uh, scatter diagram with blocks and with reference C sets nominated. Um, and if you need further uh, detail, let me just make the window a little bit bigger. I'll just stop that here so it's or just need more easily read it. And if you're wondering what the extrapolation technique is itself, you can follow the help, follow the links through the help and just browse the information that's present there. So let me just uh, hide the help, uh, turn back to here. Yeah, right. C says, uh, so we have filled in these, uh, pretty much all these items. The only thing I hadn't filled in there was a, was a contact stiffness for the seabed. Um, if it's a smooth seabed, it'll have zero friction. Um, but in terms of the uh, wave resource itself, I think that's covered uh, the options that I wanted to cover in uh, today's tutorial. Um, the one final thing to mention actually is that uh, in, in, in the next version, we'll be able to specify custom dimensions or custom ranges for the HS and, and TE or TP values, which uh, is, it just isn't possible in the, in the current version of the product uh, as we have standardized Flexcom wave. Uh, with database that's in Exceedance Finance, which is the, the, the sister product of Flexcom, Flexcom Wave. Um, okay, so in the next uh, tutorial, I'll move on to talk about performing simulations and uh, extracting results via post-processing from Flexcom Wave.